Good morning, night, evening, everyone, and welcome to another science video. This is video three of the mini-series I'm doing on the four Earth spheres. Today we will be discussing the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere contains all the water, plain and simple. All the oceans, lakes, rivers, aquifers, water vapors, clouds, and the cryosphere. The cryosphere is just a fancy way of saying all the ice on Earth. Now, the first thing we'll discuss is the different forms of water. As a solid, it's ice. As a liquid, it's water. As a gas, it's water vapor. The ways it's known for transforming are given different names, and they're categorized in two different ways, as being either exothermic or endothermic. Exothermic meaning that they have to release heat to change forms, and endothermic meaning that they have to take in heat to change forms. We will list the exothermic changes first. Freezing is from liquid to solid, condensation is from gas to liquid, and deposition is from gas to solid. The endothermic changes are melting from solid to liquid and evaporation from liquid to gas. The third thing we will discuss is water in the air. The amount of water in the air is the humidity, not to be confused with the relative humidity. The relative humidity is the percent of water vapor in the air in comparison to the total air capacity. Dew point is a temperature where water vapor condenses to water. 100% relative humidity will also trigger the dew point. Warm air will hold more water than cool air. That is because warm air particles are farther apart and thus allow more room for water to be in. Clouds form at 100% relative humidity, or at the dew point. A common misconception made with clouds is that they are not actually water vapor that is in the sky. It is actually liquid water in the air. If it were water vapor, you wouldn't be able to see it, and it wouldn't coalesce like it does. There are different forms of precipitation. Rain is when a cloud becomes so saturated with liquid that it disperses its liquid as rain. Drizzle is rain, but just with smaller droplets. Snow is frozen water from the cloud. Sleet is rain that fell, but then froze before it hit the ground. Freezing rain is rain that did not freeze on its way down, but rather froze once it hit the ground. And hail is ice in the cloud that fell lower in the cloud, but then was pushed up again by an updraft and gained more water and refroze. The more times it repeats the process of going down, gaining water, and going back up and refreezing, will determine the size of the hail. The more repetitions, the larger the hail. The fourth thing we will discuss is the water cycle. Here is an image depicting the water cycle. We'll start at the ocean. From the ocean, water will evaporate and eventually condense into clouds. From clouds, it can either precipitate back on the ocean or it can precipitate on land. Water from higher elevations will run down into pools of water, such as lakes or ponds, as runoff. Sometimes the water will make its way into groundwater. Some groundwater goes back out into the ocean, but other water coalesces in underground lakes known as aquifers. Aquifers, or aquifers, however you want to say it, are very important to how people live. Streams and rivers are surface water outlets back into the ocean. This cycle will repeat any number of times until the Earth ends, or there is no longer any water to repeat this cycle with. Our next topic is the percentages of water. 70% of all Earth is covered in water. 97% of all water is in the ocean. That leaves 3% to be fresh water. 2.25% is trapped in ice. That means 0.75% is left. Less than 1% of all water is potable. Potable water is fresh water that we have easy access to and can use in our daily lives. For going to the bathroom, showering, bathing, washing our dishes, drinking, and it's very important that we make sure there's enough water for everyone. The population is over 7 billion people right now on Earth. And it's very important that we all get something to drink. Because water, as you may already know, is essential to life on Earth. Whenever you hear things about water conservation, 
it's true. Hundreds of thousands of people don't have clean water to drink, or water at all. And that's not the only problem that we face within the hydrosphere. The overconsumption of potable water can lead to aquifer depletion and land subsidence. Without aquifers, a lot of places would be without water. Here's a picture of California. On the post there are different dates. Those, those dates are where that pole and the ground were at the same level. As you can see, as a result of aquifer depletion, the land has gr greatly subsided. Oh. But besides what happens to us on land, we also have to think about pollution. I mean, we humans, our landfills, they leak those lovely juices from batteries and industrial waste into our water and we drink it. Then there's the trash that we throw into water because we don't want to deal with it at the beach. Sewage that gets into our water. Thankfully there are ways of turning sewage into water that's clean and drinkable. And then there's the pollution in the ocean. There is a swirling mass of plastic garbage in the Pacific Ocean. A large swirling mass that's been caught in a current and has grown over the years. In fact, it's the size of Texas. The state of Texas. Well, after that sour note, I guess it's time to wrap up. Today we learned about the cryosphere, water forms and transformations, water in the air, distinguishing different forms of precipitation, the water cycle, percentages of water on Earth, and the problems within the hydrosphere. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section. Be sure to check out all the other videos in the series, and I hope you all have a fun time learning about science and Earth. Earth is amazing. Goodbye!